we've got uh, the, the government in place, we've got the cabinet, we've got the names in place. Now the only next level which one needs to work and look upon is the implementation. And I remember talking to you or talking to a couple of your colleagues as well, basically FIs who look at India pretty closely, saying they want to look at the 100 day agenda and they want to see what actually goes right in those 100 days, at least from an immediate point of view. Jeff, what's at the top of the priority out here? What are you watching out for? Well, uh, I think sequencing the reforms is going to be very important. Uh, I think uh, we need to get the economy growing again. We need to get more revenues coming in. Uh, some of the big mega projects uh, are really uh, uh, there for a couple of years from now. I think we need to get, see progress on the goods and services tax. We need to see progress, I think, uh, starting to simplify the tax code. We need to see a big push with some of the power and other infrastructure projects which have been stalled or delayed. And uh, I think uh, energy in those areas will help to uh, unleash some of the animal spirits which have probably, probably been depressing uh, capital spending in India to quite a significant ex extent, according to some recent IMF research. So uh, we need to see a proper sequencing of the reforms, not trying to do everything at once. You know, Jeff, before I actually come on to the equity markets out here and start discussing the outlook there, just want to get your sense in terms of what this could actually mean for the currency as well, because one of the other talking points, and that's what we've been discussing with foreign investors like yourself out here, is that what, what do you make of the currency, the kind of strength that we've seen in the Indian rupee? Um, I think that's not surprising. I think it's inflows that are driving the rupee up. It's a, it's a firm rupee. I think okay. the RBI will be discouraging excessive short-term strength and will be intervening, uh, repairing the forward book, etc. And um, I think uh, you, you need to keep an eye on hot money inflows. We know that the IMF uh, are now sort of condone selective capital controls when that's necessary. So uh, I, I think the thing to do now is, is not to let too much momentum. We don't want to see momentum uh, traders coming in and pushing the rupee above fair value. Right. Devin, uh, give us a sense of you know, where markets are headed, how you think they're going to react at this point of time. Uh, you know, we have, of course, seen markets already run up on on the election outcome, on anticipation of what's to come. So to a large extent, do you think it's already factored in? Or are you expecting volatility in the next few days as we start to see a rollout of uh, reforms or of the new Modi government's agenda? Well, as you, uh, the election outcome is already over. The government is already formed. I think now the next agenda would be to look at the budget. And before run up to the budget, I think one would probably start expecting what all kind of moves the government is expected to take and probably the budget be announced thereafter. I think the market would be keenly watching some of the policy decisions and the policy actions which they would probably spell out and which would get a shape in the budget as far as its implementation is concerned. So to a greater extent, I think the, uh, the activity or the engagement in the activity would be, I think, to, to related to the, the policy, I think, which they would probably spell out. At the same time, I think we are having two more events which one would also like to look at. One is, of course, the monsoon. The monsoon is a factor which one needs to look at, I think, very carefully for this time because of the El Nino uh, warning which has come up already. So if the monsoon starts uh, in, a, in a normal course, then probably I think market would at least have a sigh of breather on that front at least. And the most important part would be the next week when the RBI comes up with the policy review. I think their decision would be also equally important for the market because the rupee has started showing appreciate, appreciation, I think, between the last policy review and, I think, the coming of policy review. In, re, in this case, I think the inflation-related pressure probably could ease at some point of time. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think one would like to watch and see the commentary of RBI. So, yes, I think market is calculating each such event and probably factoring in as far as the upside or the downside sure. is concerned. To my mind, at the same time, I think if you look at the index, I think it is going to remain weighing bound between 7100 to 7500, 7600 for the time being. Jeff, let's get your thoughts as well in terms of the market outlook because yesterday on an intraday basis, we saw a little bit of a crack coming in as far as the markets are concerned. But are you still bullish when we talk about the Indian outlook? Um, we think the uh, economy will start to show signs of improvement, probably regardless of government policies. I think it was yeah. at, at that spot in the cycle anyway. But uh, I think uh, there could be a little bit of natural uh, sort of uh, 
uh, weakness now in the markets until we get some clarity on, on the, what the key reforms are going to be. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if there's something of a technical setback short term, but uh, that won't discourage foreign institutional investors. The track record is that the foreign money doesn't come in and out on a weekly kind of trading view. It tends to be relatively sticky, even for the portfolio uh, equity investments, uh, not just foreign direct investment. Uh, investors come to India really pretty much for the long term. All right, so the long-term story is uh, very much intact. Jeff, thanks so much for your time this morning. Dave, and pleasure as always. Uh